All right. Um, zombies. Zombies. Zombies uh, everywhere. We've talked a little bit about the potential for zombies in the U.S. economy uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the challenge that's going to pose it, once these zombies start going a bust because as interest rates go up, they now can't really afford the debt that they've taken on at higher interest rates. They, they, the only reason they've survived is because, in a sense, they were bailed out by government through low interest rates. Well, the zombie phenomena is not unique to America, and it's not unique to the current situation. I mean, uh, Japanese companies during the, uh, uh, during the 1990s were held afloat by, through government policy uh, by uh, uh, Japanese banks that made loans not based on the ability of the company that they were loaning the money to pay it back, but they were making loans to companies in order to sustain those companies as zombie companies uh, who would then uh, employ people. That, that is, the, the mandate in Japan at the time was no unemployment. You cannot have unemployment. And this lasted for decades. And banks were basically doing the government's bidding by keeping companies afloat to prevent unemployment. And, and, just, and, and of course, what that does, wh what does this do? Whenever you see zombie companies, what it does is it takes away all the market discipline. It prevents companies that are not sustainable economically from going bankrupt. Bankruptcy is really, really, really important in a free market econo economy. Uh, bankruptcy, uh, you know, is, um, uh, is a way to clean out the muck, to redeploy capital, uh, to, to increase productivity by getting rid of the least productive businesses in the economy. So it is a great mechanism for reallocation of, uh, uh, of capital to its more productive uses. And it's crucial. A healthy economy is an economy which allows for bankruptcy. This is why the United States, I think, has done so well in spite of all the recessions and, 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 and problems, economic problems. It's because we deal with it pretty quickly in spite of the government's bail, you know, bailouts and everything else. We allow companies to go bust. We allow a reallocation of capital and reallocation of human resources. And that happens. Japan didn't let it happen. It went into this lost several decades and, and has never really recovered from the crash of 1990 and the, and the consequent, in a sense, government and bank bailouts. And... Um, so this is kind of background to, to the story of today, which is an, an, an article by, uh, I guess, an economist who's, who writes a lot about finance, real estate, economics, Ap Apit Gupta. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's uh, writing about, look, uh, something obviously horrific is happening in, in the Chinese economy. A lot of people are trying to explain it. It's real estate. Uh, and and uh, some people saying it's, it's, it's a lack of consumption, kind of a Keynesian explanation of the of the model the government needs to stimulate more the government needs to encourage people to consume more and offer more welfare uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, uh, suppression of entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurs uh, the tech sector government intervention in the tech sector suppressing the economy and he says all of those explanations might have something to do with it and he's more I think most dismissive of the kind of the Keynesian model justifiably but everything, but he says there's one other factor that we have to take into account. And that is that China is an authoritarian regime. And authoritarian regimes do not allow companies to go bankrupt. Because companies that go bankrupt create unemployment and that creates instability. And it, it, it suggests that the government doesn't know what it's doing and the government is in bad shape. And, and, and the economy is in bad shape, and that creates, uh, uh, you know, negative uh, negativity in the economy. And the governments don't allow the bankruptcy. The Soviet Union is like this. Communism generally like this. And, 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 and fascism is like this. And Chinese fascism, I think, is the same way. As he says, the real problem in China is, is fundamentally a political problem, which does not allow companies, when they are no longer productive, when they are no longer making a profit, to actually shut down, close down, and have their resources reallocated. And he, and he provides a bunch of, of graphs and, and, uh, and, and economic arguments and graphs and uh, uh, extrapolations over this. And this, this is happening primarily in the state-owned sector, 
state-owned enterprises in the Chinese economy where the government has direct control. But it's also happening in the private sector because like Japanese banks, Chinese banks have been instructed to keep private companies afloat through cheap loans and through loans that would never be made because they're too risky uh, just to keep these companies going, zombie companies. So much of the state-owned enterprises, maybe a majority of state-owned enterprises, a significant number of them, are zombies, and quite a bit of the private sector are zombies. And the consequence of this is, as you've seen over the last uh, really 10 years, a significant decline in the return on investment, the return on assets, the return on equity for these companies, both in the state-owned and in the private sector, really driven by this zombie phenomenon, driven by government intervention, not allowing markets to clear. This is, I think, a, 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 an important sentence from his review, which I think, uh, which I think is, is right on. He says, China's growth decline is fundamentally a political problem, not one of inducing entrepreneurs to work harder, but in, in the inability to enforce market discipline and allow the appropriate functioning of price signals. So this is kind of a Hayekian story uh, of, of, of uh, the market is not functioning, you're not getting prices. Of course, prices get distorted by zombie companies because they are willing to buy stuff even when it doesn't make sense for them to buy stuff at prices that it doesn't make sense. Uh, they constitute demand when they should be bust and there should be no demand for products. So zombie companies in America, in Japan, in, in China, uh, in old communist countries always distort and pervert prices and allocation of capital and, uh, and, and resources. And, uh, and I agree completely that this is a massive, massive issue uh, in China right now and one that is going to be very, very difficult for China to solve. And this is why I've told you I'm so pessimistic about China because it's, it's not clear how you solve this at all um, because of the politics. You, you, how do you solve this without freedom? The solution is, of course, free markets. The solution is getting government to back off from its involvement in the economy. But that's unthinkable to a regime like China that is so authoritarian.